Welcome to part four of our series about uh, the restoration of this Singer Model 337 uh, zigzag sewing machine. Uh, this, this part four is going to be the inspection. We're going to take a look at the machines, uh, take off some covers, see if we notice what condition it's in, uh, if we notice anything right away that's missing or broken. broken. So if we need to order the parts, we want to get that started right away. So while we're waiting for delivery, we can be busy cleaning and doing other adjustments on the machine. So I usually just start with uh, releasing the stop motion knob and seeing if that works. So with that released, uh, none of the nothing else should move. But I see the uptake lever, needle bar, feed dogs are still are still moving. If I try and loosen it more, the knob actually makes the parts turn more. So I I know right away that uh, it needs some cleaning and adjusting there. Uh, I'll hook that back up, and then let's let's see if the uh, hook does rotate. I see the feed dogs moving. I see the hook rotating. So that, that's a good sign. Let's see if uh, this is this is pretty stiff but the tension uh, does adjust. Uh, move it back to zero, move it forward to nine. Eh, I can only get it to about seven so it may be out of adjustment, or dirty, or both. I'm going to open that back up to zero. This is the stitch width. Let's see with the needle up. Can I adjust the width? Oh, it's pretty stiff. There we go. So it's sticking in the first part, but then it's going two, three, four. Okay. So the mechanisms in there are pretty good. It's a little sticky. Uh, left center right needle. Oop. That's pretty frozen. Uh, stitch length. Uh, okay, just real, real stiff. Probably real dirty. Um, bobbin winder. There we go. Starting to move it a little bit. Okay, at least there's a tire there. This wouldn't move. So this is that's fairly fairly common here. Machine that's been in storage a long time. Uh, the light bulb case is here. There's a dirty, greasy light bulb in there. The toggle switch, switch power and light switch toggle. We'll have to see if they work. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and plug in. Oh! Uh, okay, usually down is off and up is on, so the stitch, the switch might have got turned around, or maybe that's just this model. I don't know. If I can free up the stop motion, that's when I'll usually see if the, the motor runs at all. Um, again, this one is out of adjustment, but I'll, I'll try running it real slow just to see if anything works here. Okay, that's a good sign. I, I don't test it much more than that. Uh, probably needs a lot of cleaning and lubrication. So, I not, not too bad. Uh, the, the condition of the finish is really nice on this. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really buy this machine. What I bought was the the cabinet this machine was in was a, a cabinet that I wanted. And it just so happened the machine was in it and the price was right. Then when I looked up about this Model 337, I became very interested because it has a type of hook I've never uh, encountered before. This is a horizontal, meaning the hook turns on a horizontal plane. It's got a front drop-in bobbin versus a side 
vertical bobbin but it still has an oscillating hook meaning that the the hook doesn't really go around in circles it goes back and forth and I never I didn't even know there was such a thing I've never encountered that the uh, vertical oscillating hooks on the 301 where the slide plates this way and you lift up and you put a uh, bobbin down here and the hook goes back and forth. I've seen models, uh, not Singer, but others that uh, have a vertical oscillating hook that the bobbin goes, bobbin case goes down in here and in. Um, I've done dozens of machines with a horizontal rotary hook where the hook just goes around and around. But this was a first for me, so I'm excited to take a look at it and see how it works. I did download the free um, instruction manual from the SingerCo.com site and read about it. I always suggest that, just so you get an idea of how the machine is uh, supposed to function and so forth. Um, let's, let's take a look here now. I think what I'll do first is take the top cover off. So, like a lot of Singers and a lot of other brands, there's just a couple of screws up here. So, I see if I can just open them right away. They're, they're pretty stiff. Probably haven't been opened in a long time. But, I'm anxious to see... When I take a look at the at the top and the bottom, that usually gives me an idea of how many hours I'm going to have if it's if it's been under uh, maintained and it's dry and dusty. I I kind of like that. Um, if it's been over maintained and it's got all kinds of weird lubricants and stuff in there, um, that means a a lot more cleaning. If somebody maintained this with 3-in-1 oil or motor oil or Lord only knows what, that's uh, that's usually means a lot more cleaning. So we'll just lift this off and there we go. Um, let's get my block of wood that I talked about and put it under here. Um, so I've got a, a brown, sticky, dry grease on there that's going to be hard to get off on this uh, worm gear that, that turns the stack here. Um, and let's see if I got, yeah, I got, I've got some of that down in here too. It's not, it's not too bad. Uh, It's not, it's not too bad, but it's really dried on there and varnished. Um, I see pieces of the tire breaking off here. Let me look under the lid there for a moment. Yep. Not too bad. It's not all full of grease. There's some grease thrown off. There's no cracks or bad uh, scratches. The top cover screws are in pretty good shape. They'll clean up very nice. This is where I would start uh, putting parts. Uh, I, I recognize these top cover screws, so I'm going to know what they are. I'll just put them in a bag. If I didn't know, I would take a note paper and just write top cover screws and put a scrap of paper in the bag with them. So I will put this with this and put it aside out of the way. So again, uh, not, not, not too bad in here. Not, not too bad in there. Let me get my headlight on here. Maybe I can give you a little better light at some of this. I don't have a real good camera set up and I don't have a videographer today so I'm kind of on my own here. Let's see if we can get a little bit more light in there. Yep. 
It's definitely going to need a, a really good cleaning and scrubbing and re-greasing. Uh, you don't you don't want to leave that old kind of grease and put new grease or oil on on top of it. It really doesn't help things. Uh, if you if you need to do that a little bit, just because uh, the machine's frozen and you want to get it to turn a little bit to see what's going on. I don't see anything uh, missing or broken in there. I'm going to take this cover cover off next. It's in nice shape, a few smudges, it's dirty like every machine, but the, the chrome thumb screw is in really great shape, shine right up. I'll put that aside and I'll put this with the top cover screws. Now let's, let's take a look in here at how, how well everything looks. There's, there's some varnishing here, um, not too bad. This, this machine looks pretty under maintained. No, no, no damage, just dry, but it's not bad looking at all. So I'm very pleased about that. I can, I can clean this up and uh, polish it and put fresh oil and we are going to be in great shape. Um, while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and see if uh, yeah I'm feeling a spring in there. Let me, let me tighten this up and see uh, yeah sometimes on this uh, back plate right here the plus minus I call it there's a bar that goes across and the pin in there is what pushes that to, re to release the spring, spring pressure from the two discs and if that's not happening that means that little bar is broken and if it is I'm either gonna have to fix it or buy a new one I can find new ones but it's very rare to find a blue one so I'm, I'm hoping it's not broken or that I could fix it because a white one on there just wouldn't look as good. Let's go ahead and turn the machine on its back. I'm just going to put a cloth for a little protection here. And uh, I'll get my block under here. I'm glad to see it has the oil drip pan cover. So I'm just going to put a screwdriver in here and start loosening that. I want to see under here so I can see the bottom gearing. Now from what I could see in the in the parts schematic and the owner's manual or the instruction manual this is all metal gearing so down here I'm not expecting a timing belt or anything. I'm going to put this in my top cover screw bag and let's see if I can pop this off and we'll take a look. So I've got the normal fuzz, not a ton of oil drips, which means under maintenance, which is good. Uh, this doesn't, doesn't even smell too bad. The machine itself kind of smells like a locker room I was in in high school where all the bad boys smoked in the back corner. So it's really it's going to need to be cleaned up, but look at this, all metal. And here's the, here's the bottom of that oscillating hook mechanism. Now this is aluminum. I think the body, if I look back in here, part's not painted, it's aluminum. That's why it's lighter. I see some fingerprints, uh, greasy fingerprints in here, so somebody got in here at least once. To, to oil stuff but I don't see tons of oil I don't see varnishing I've got the typical uh, oh, there's a spider web I've got the typical uh, <laughs> uh, dust thread dust and fuzz and everything which isn't which isn't bad down here on the fork bar the counterweight everything's moving look at that this was a pretty good. This this looks pretty nice. 
So for me, it's kind of like a free machine because I was buying the cabinet. So uh, it's looking real good. While, while I've got it in this position, I'm going to go ahead and take the back plate off, which will expose the back of the motor. And there's a motor belt. So from the motor up to the hand wheel is how we get the motor power to everything up to the hand wheel which goes to the vertical shaft uh, which goes to the horizontal shaft and up front to the needle bar and everything like that now again I, I recognize these are real common back cover screws um, I see the difference between the top screws so all these screws so far are going to go into one bag for me Here's the back of the cover. Uh, again, the, the finish is nice. It's not banged up and scratched. Really, really looks good. I'm real happy about that. And it's definitely aluminum. I'll put that aside. We turn this back up now. And we'll take a look at the back end here. We can get some, get some light around there for you. There we go. So, all of this, these little black spots are deterioration from the hand wheel and probably from the belt. I can see the edge of the belt is uh, going to be frayed. It is frayed, and I'm going to replace this belt anyway. Um, when I do a machine, I replace the belt unless, unless I can tell it's just like a brand new belt. Here's the belt number right there, Singer 196386. So that's going to be the belt replacement I order. So I happen to have one of these new belts, but this would be a time right now when I take my list, take my parts order list, and I put motor belt and the and the uh, part number right there. Let's turn a little bit um, to be forward. Yeah, there, there's a, there is a little bit of, of fraying on here. The, the belt is subtle. It's not too bad. So for the beginning testing and so forth, I can use this belt until I get my, my new one. You see other other look in there. You can see the motors mounted there. Some of the electrical wire, wiring. There's a lot of very, a lot of dust in there. I'm not seeing a lot of oil or anything that's dripped all over the motor, so that's real good. That's a good sign. Let's take this hand wheel and stop motion knob off of here now, and let's see how that looks. This particular one, if you bought the uh, adjuster service manual. On uh, manualsoncd.com, you would you would know how to get all of this off. There's the little chrome-plated screw or bright metal. I'm going to hold on to the big wheel and just unscrew. This is actually we call it a knob, but Singer calls it a screw. Oop. So there's the screw, and it's got some dried up brown sticky grease on it. Here's the washer. It also has, you can see that a little better. You can see how dry that that is. So I'd say this was a service by somebody at least once. And probably a service center that chose to use this kind of grease, whatever it is. But they didn't really glom it on everywhere and overdo it. And that's why I think it was a service center and, and not just the owner of the machine. Um, so that's not too bad. I, I really can't uh, pull this off yet with the belt until I make some adjustments down here. So I'm going to hold off on that just, just for a moment while I continue my inspection of the machine. Before I forget it, let me just put these parts in a bag. So that, uh, yeah, 
there's some more grease on there but but look it's not uh, it's not scratched up real bad there's some scratches on it it's dirty and grimy and greasy but that's gonna clean right up with that crud cutter very much so so that's that's nice that these can get scratched up and believe me they scratch chrome to me looks worse than scratched paint I'll put that out of the way I'll just continue going around here looking at uh, the rest of the machine even even the backside uh, common here to have lots of paint chips from a cover or a table uh, no big scratches no big chips again very very dirty and dusty and now you can you can see down here there's some good dust so you know the machine sat someplace for a long time either in a table hanging hanging down and that's why the dust accumulated here or poss possibly in a in a case but this was hanging in the table and when I see that dust I don't think it was in the back of somebody's sewing closet I think it sat in somebody's garage or a storage unit or something like that now I want to I'm, I'm very interested to take a look at this bobbin area now so whoop, don't forget to put my washer in the bag if I can tilt this up a little bit I hope the I hope the video comes out looking pretty good I'm gonna take the needle out and I'm gonna took take the presser foot off everything about this whole area goes into one bag for me there we go put the arm up there it comes put this arm up now if this is open all the way it's supposed to be a little uh, lever that pops that pin up I know it was that way on the 347 I did but I'm not I'm not getting that now so I'm just going to turn this some more till the feed dogs will go down a little and lift up this corner and pull this guy out wow clean just just some very minor minor scratches here probably from people putting the needle in and out here's a class 66 bobbin nice full bobbin whoever sewed on this last time they used it probably ran a, a bobbin full put it in there to be ready for the next time I want to take this slide plate off here so I know if I lift this up and a little bit and slide it forward I should be able to get it off the spring oh boy come on you the springs way up here at the front on this there we go Probably the slides in here are, are maybe just full of a lot of dirt and dust, but that that came off. This uh, spring right here happens to go right from the top, not from the front to back or anything. So I'm going to take this off. Uh, the spring is very springy and that's great I'm gonna take the screw and the spring out though because it, it needs to be cleaned and it's probably going to need to be cleaned underneath it so you can you know you when I when I buy these machines on Craigslist a lot of people take a damp cloth or Windex or whatever and clean the whole outside and swab this a little bit um, and if that's all that you want to clean and the machine will work for you and put some fresh oil, uh, go for it. My project is more of a restoration. I want to get this as close as possible to looking and sewing like it's brand new. So that's why I take some. These are real simple things to take apart and it, it aids in the cleaning 
and checking of. So I know if I lift this spring up and swing it to the right, it moves the bobbin position spring here enough that I turn a little more and get the feed dog back up a little bit. Then I can gently take in here and twist left and wiggle around here. Oh, come on, I almost got you. Maybe I can move this position spring a little bit more. Oh, that's about it. I want to get that bobbin holder out of there. There we go. So on the 47, I had to turn it and lift the back end. This one just barely turn it and lift straight up. So there's the metal uh, bobbin holder. It looks good, but I'll clean it, and then there's testing I can do on it. You may be able to see right here is the actual point of the hook. And on the 347s and 400s, 5, 6, 7, this just keeps going around. But you'll see here it comes down to the cast off position where about 5 or 6 o'clock where it would cast off the needle thread. And then it's just going to go back up clockwise and grab the needle thread again and bring it back down. So again, I'm hoping that you can see the... I wonder if I could highlight that a little bit. Oh, I guess I guess not. Yeah, okay. I get this back on there. But it's it's moving pretty smooth here. Looking pretty good. So I'm going to leave the hook and the positioning bracket and parts in here right now. Move that back over and get it in place. I'm going to see if I can get the feed dogs out of here. Two little screws back here. They're pretty clean. The whole machine's pretty clean. But I want to see if I can get them out. It helps me clean out the interior there. And uh, I really scrub. If I use the crud cutter uh, on swabs and so forth in here or any place on the machine, I don't like to leave the chemical on afterwards. So I will go over it again with uh, Q-tip soaked in alcohol and uh, rags so forth to, to get that chemical off of there. Let's see if I can move that a little bit and get some cleaning done in here. There we go. So I get this scrubbed out, blown out, vacuumed out. You can do the same thing for up here. Um, if, if you don't want to dismantle stuff or do a heavy cleaning, you know, this is in pretty good shape. Uh, you could actually even spray a little of the crud cutter in here and uh, work the needle bar up and down to, to get it in there and then spray alcohol in there and wipe it out, oil it. Um, for me, that, that's not going to be enough, but I'm going to take the needle holder off here. There's uh, one screw that holds the little, little tiny thread guide pigtail and the, and the needle clamp or needle holder so watch out for that there's that there's the shiny metal screw head for that and then you can uh, take the thumb screw out some of these have a little jib in the needle bar it's 
very small and you gotta you gotta watch out for that if that's in there you would see it right now and uh, they're they're hard to find they're hard to replace so if there was one it would pop out right now so I think we're okay you can see some of the varnishing and the discoloration and stuff here again this one this is not too bad you could you could put uh, al alcohol and brush and q-tips and swab this up and you could probably get most of that off I'm probably gonna clean everything with crud cutter I'll know later if I need to take it apart for uh, adjustments or anything I take the I take the uh, presser bar out frequently just to polish it up and clean the spring and test the spring and everything but um, I'm not going to do that right now I think that's enough for the first video so just to recap we, we inspect the machine make any notes of anything we know that we're going to need like in this case our I would do a new motor belt um, everything else looked complete the whole hook assembly was here the bobbin holder and the positioning bracket and spring are here the feed dogs all the screws um, take a look under here there might be a spring in there yeah see it's pretty sticky so we might take that off and clean it or just prop it up and squirt some alcohol in there and work it through I know everybody's not going to take the machine apart the way I am so we'll get to that and our you know for taking this stuff off or, or like this the service repair guide is going to talk about that so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here for now I think uh, the next one will be taking the front cover plate off uh, taking the hand wheel off and the motor belt loosening the motor some things like that we'll get into this a little bit deeper so for now I'm going to edit up this video and post it as a part 4 inspection and cover removal. Thanks.